Our next speaker is Dr. Daryl Pines. He's the 34th president of the University of Maryland. And as the Lynn L. Martin Professor of Aerospace Engineering, uh, Dr. Pines has emphasized achieving excellence in all aspects of university life while creating a diverse and multicultural community that allows everyone to reach their full potential. He's a member of the National Academy of Engineering. He's a fellow of the American Institute of Aeronautics and, a and Astronautics, uh, of the American Society of Mechanical Engineers and of the Institute of Physics. He chairs the Engineering Advisory Committee for NSF's Engineering Directorate, and he sits on the Board of Trustees for Underwriters uh, Laboratory Not-for-Profit Arm. And he also serves as a member of the MIT Corporation, the Board of Trustees for the Mass Massachusetts Institute of Technology. And Dr. Pines received his BS in Mechanical Engineering from the University of California and uh, at Berkeley, and his MS and PhD in Mechanical Engineering from MIT. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dr. Daryl Pines. Well, good morning, everyone. How you doing? All right. Give us some life to this uh, audience. Um, so this is an exciting time for me to be here. I was here last year talking about uh, quantum at University of Maryland. I'm going to do a little bit more today. Um, before I begin, though, I want to do a little experiment with you. I want all of you to close your eyes. Uh, this is the president, and I'm a professor, so you have to do it. Close your eyes. Um, please close your eyes, just for a little bit. Don't go to sleep, though. Now, I want you to think about what you want the future to look like in 10 years, what the future to look like in maybe 20 years. Just, just meditate on that for a second. And then now think about it for 50 years. So I want everyone to imagine the future where doctors can create immediate personalized health plans for every patient. I want everyone to imagine the future where our most sensitive information and data is locked somewhere impenetrable to hackers. I want everyone to imagine a future where we get early warnings now on climate and in the environment. And I want everyone to imagine the future is not just because of quantum, but because, as my previous speaker just said, quantum is for all. So quantum is for all. So we, at the University of Maryland, have been championing this vision and leading the way toward realizing what is possible, which is the center of a dynamic ecosystem that we call here in the DMV the capital of quantum. You can see here in the valley of our strategic location between Baltimore and Washington, and surrounded by the world's leading technology and research organizations, both government, private, and academic. We also, at Maryland, have some of the leading researchers. We've been doing this work now for 30 plus years. We have 200 plus faculty and staff that work in the space of quantum science, technology, information science, and other areas. We have 200 plus publications that come out of our university every year. We are our number two ranked public institution as measured by US News and Report in the field of quantum physics. We ha now have eight um, quantum-focused centers, and we have one Nobel laureate connected to this field. So we indeed think we are in the midst of all things quantum. So um, we are also recently celebrated a tremendous milestone with our partner, INQ. You heard from Peter Chapman yesterday, um, who's the CEO and president of INQ. That really puts a marker on this sort of marker in the ground that you heard from my previous speaker from IBM, Jay, on this quantum for all that we're all trying to achieve, because it's going to take all of us to, to move this technology forward. So INQ, as you heard yesterday, is a revolutionary startup, which was born out of our physics department and the physics research at our university, and from the first publicly traded pure play hardware and software company in the quantum computing space. We are also proud to have such groundbreaking partners headquartered right here in uh, College Park, Maryland, over in our Discovery District. And last week was the grand opening of the University of Maryland and INQ's National Quantum Lab, which is actually for all. The Q Lab, as we now refer to, is a national user facility that will enable the global scientific community to take advantage of the cutting edge hardware in College Park through training, access, and mentoring. This facility has really opened the doors to the capital of quantum. Now, anybody can do quantum research. Of course, not anybody, but people who have some basic skills can do quantum research. And plenty of projects are already lined up for the Q-Lab, which is now gathering space for the world's quantum researchers and startups. 
This is a huge step for all of us and our partners in academia, private industry, and the government. I just want to play a, a video from that announcement just last week. Nowhere else is this type of access to cutting edge quantum computing so readily available than right here in the state of Maryland. And Forbes magazine agrees. It cited College Park as the epicenter of quantum technology in the United States. It's clear that President Pines and the College Park team are leading the nation to produce the next generation of quantum innovators, generate new quantum IP, and attract more quantum startups. So why would you ask that we would have this partnership with INQ and to create this national Q lab? Well, the pink rectangle is an indication of why. On these graphs, which show the range in, these, in which applications are likely to succeed with <clears throat> INQ's ion trap computers. On the left, you see other versions of other technology, um, and you see that on the far left there that the pink triangle has the greatest uh, capacity to handle more applications, at least as that was at least about a, a year ago um, to date. This comparison of circuit depth and circuit width shows the exponentially greater capacity of INQ's approach and technology. So we are very confident in its potential for creating breakthroughs and leading to quantum for all for everyone. So the Q-Lab is also now part of a tremendous quantum foundation of education and partnership. So at Maryland, we've been offering quantum certificates, quantum graduate degrees, and now we've launched a new quantum minor, and that's available to anyone. The, those two graduate programs are online. Um, and so courses that you can take are like mathematics, methods of quantum computing, the physics of quantum devices, quantum machine learning, are all available and open uh, to the general public. We are also stretching this part partnership <clears throat> outside of our institution through the Mid-Atlantic Quantum Alliance. You can see this here, the wide array of partners, and we are just getting started in terms of who we look, look to collaborate with in our state, in the nation, and of course, internationally. So we're really excited about the partners, both the corporate, the government, and academia. So that's just part of how we are taking the lead on quantum, how research is revolutionizing the industry as well, but we have other exciting things that we would like to share with you. This project is one that I'm truly, truly excited about. Led by Professor Ida Walks and Dr. Tripti Sinha, the Mid-Atlantic Region Quantum Internet, or MARKI as we refer to it, seeks to connect quantum nodes and lead the way to the future of a quantum internet. With funding from the National Science Foundation's Convergence Accelerator Grant, this program is in collaboration between the University of Maryland, MIT, and the University of Arizona, alongside partners including Cisco Systems, Juniper Networks, INQ, and the Army Research Lab. There have already been very promising results. We have demonstrated the longest transmission of photons from a trapped ion source along existing telecom fiber infrastructure, a distance of about 11 kilometers or 6.8 miles for you US domestic people who don't convert to kilometers. And this fall could produce even more exciting improvements as Markey enters the next phase or phase two and the nodes at INQ and the Joint Quantum Institute get new ion traps and quantum modems. A group is also developing a next generation modem that will be more compact and have four times the efficiency of its predecessor. Let me sh show the video of the researchers who are working on this. The quantum internet is a grand challenge. Initially, we're going to develop a regional quantum network called the Marquee Network. So the Marquee Network is a test bed footprint for quantum technologies. And the goal here is to test emerging quantum communication technologies on the network, in particular, the products that come out of the Quanect project. We believe that a quantum internet will have uh, applications in many technology sectors, like for example, finance, medicine, and cybersecurity. We hope that the hardware that Quanect is developing uh, will be adopted by uh, the internet service providers of today, uh, which will make it easy for emerging quantum computing companies to connect their quantum computers over the internet. 
So each communications breakthrough in information telecommunications came with its own first message. What do you think the first message might be for a quantum internet? Let's see, let's look at the history. So you all remember the telegraph by Samuel Morse, right? And the first message was, what hath God wrought? Right, that actually was the first message sent over the telegraph. Now, the telephone, you all know Alexander Graham Bell and Bell Laboratories. Mr. Watson, come here, I want you, right? That's why IBM still, IBM still uses the name Watson. Um, the internet. Now, you probably don't know Charlie Klein too well, maybe not as famous as the previous two names, but he sent the first message, which was supposed to be log in. And it didn't go very well, and only LO came across. And they reimagined that to be lo and behold. Um, so what will be coming when we do the uh, quantum internet? Well, let me give you a few thoughts. Maybe ET phone home? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, maybe um, you will be assimilated from Star Trek. Uh, resistance is futile. Uh, I'm just giving you some thoughts. Uh, we don't know what the next quantum message will be, I, but when the breakthrough happens, it will be exciting. It will be exciting. So at Maryland, um, we also have the Quantum Technology Center, which is led by Dr. Ron Walsworth and focused on being the bridge between quantum research and application areas. This includes work in quantum sensing, computing, simulation, communications, and networking, materials, and algorithms. On the right of this chart, you can see the companies it has worked with in the past from quantum startups to long-established companies such as Boeing, Lockheed Martin, and Raytheon. On the left, you can see the projects where QTC is making progress on today and into the future, be it in research and educational instrumentation or electronics hardware analysis and where it expects to go in the next 10 years into areas such as navigation, materials, extreme environments, and biosignaling. So let me just share a little bit more about a few of these emerging startups. So QTC has already produced very promising spin-outs, which include these four that are on the chart there. QDM.io focuses on sensor instrumentation. Quantum Catalyzer focuses on sensor application development. Euclid, which focuses on imaging and AI for next generation electronics, and Exerts Technologies, which focuses on quantum sensors for extreme environments. So all of these are just recent startups that are just emerging. Now, we do all of this because quantum is going to make a dramatic and historic revolutionary ch transformational change across all of society. We already know it's going to change computing. It's going to change cryptography. It's going to change material science and materials development. It's going to change networks. It's going to leverage machine learning and artificial intelligence. It's going to change systems research. It's going to change sensors. It's going to change software. And it's going to change the world. Quantum will improve the lives of every person on Earth because the advances that are happening every day on our campus and inside the capital of Quantum and other universities and labs around the world is going to make it happen. Quantum is an industry that involves for-profit companies, startups, and inclusive IP, but also the government and academia. But we can't lose sight on the transformative power of this technology and the way that discoveries in the lab should be put to use to advance the lives of everyone on the planet. So I want you to just think about the future. I could ask you to close your eyes again, but that thought experiment probably won't work two times in class. Um, but I want you to imagine that you have control of that through partnerships with all of the entities that are here at the Quantum World Congress, through synergies on technologies that we together can advance and move fearlessly forward on this revolutionary technology. And I'm happy that the University of Maryland is one of the leaders looking to partner with all of you. Thank you very much.